As pro photographers, we're not all that different to hobbyists and amateurs. However, a lot of us have studio spaces and with these studio spaces comes additional storage and with that storage comes hoarding. And I wanna talk about some of the things that you'll probably only find in a professional photographer's studio and that most hobbyists perhaps wouldn't have. Some of it's useful, some of it's complete junk and a waste of time, but let's go and delve into it. Now, the first thing, and I think this probably happens to everyone eventually, is hard drives everywhere. I probably have nearly 100 terabytes, is there a word for that? It's not a petabyte, is it? It's not enough. Anyway, 100 terabytes of hard drives kicking around in here. They're not necessarily for storage. I have a little library going on of like bookcase looking ones, which syncs to a, an online service as well. But they're mostly just for transferring data, shooting to, and all that sort of stuff. And the problem is when you get a lot of them and a lot of jobs going on, you just keep ordering them off Amazon and they, they sort of build and build and build until you have these hard drives which don't really have a purpose and then they become old sort of software. It's like you got a USB 2, USB 3, USB C, a Thunderbolt and all these different things and they just end up gathering dust. And I've been to a few studios in the past and they all have the drawer of shame which is just random hard drives that have been neglected. Now, something which is an ethos that I try and live by is put wheels on everything. The tripod that I'm shooting this on has wheels on it. My tether station, wheels. Styling kit is on wheels. My assistant kit is all on wheels so we can move it around. Pretty much every studio has a problem with space. There's very few studios that are so big that they go, we have more space than we need. Even the huge ones, they need to be able to reconfigure and set up to do different jobs. There's very few professional photographers whose studio is set up to do one thing and that is all they do. We often have to move things around and having everything on wheels just makes it that little bit easier. The next thing is more of a recent thing and that's good quality coffee and coffee machines. I know YouTubers all do the slow coffee montage and I did one as well and it's embarrassing, but good quality coffee in a studio is a must. It is like social currency. Going that I get it from this roaster and there's this particular bean from this farm and these little things, even people who don't drink coffee find it kind of interesting or at least expect it nowadays. So good coffee machines, plenty of coffee machines and coffee beans being delivered and just that general smell of coffee in the studio is always nicer than the slightly gone off food you're photographing. Now, one of the big things I've noticed running workshops over the years is that all the people who come into workshops have this beautiful, pristine, brand new gear. But as soon as you go into a professional photographer's studio, you'll notice that everything's a little bit ropey. It's like going to a hotel with a one-star TripAdvisor review. It all works, it's all functional, but it's probably a few generations old. The stands are probably older than the photographer and they got from a recent photographer who went bankrupt or retired. Everything is pretty old and battered from the 80s and 90s, even though most hobbyists are living in 2020. So, it's one of those things that when I started out and moved into professional photography, I thought everything should be pristine and all the rest of it because the rental studios are like that. But they're like that because that's how they make their money. We make our money by taking pictures, not by looking good and presentable, hence the attire. And for me, it was a big change in sort of mindset to go, oh, do you know what? It's fine that there's a massive dent in that stand. It does the job. And most professional photography studios are just like that. Knives. Now, I'm not talking about the cool flick knives and stuff that some of the YouTubers have around the world, although I do enjoy a good, good few flick knives. I am talking about just knives for everything. Knives for opening packages, knives for tying, tearing cables apart. Knife, just Knives and scissors are everywhere in photographer studios. I probably have 20 pairs of scissors and the same amount of number of knives, and that's not even going into the knives we have for the food prep. This is just knives for knifing things, not people unless. These are just knives that are there for your opening of your packages and just making life a little bit simpler. And you have loads of them, so everyone can grab a knife and start opening stuff, breaking stuff, whatever it may be. And this is something I didn't have before I had a studio. I didn't own a knife in that sense. But now they're everywhere, they're all over the studio, so you've got to take some gaff tape and tear it or some tape and cut it. You just grab the nearest knife. Now, this is something that I got from Matt, uh, who's a, an American photographer, and this is tennis balls. And I kept seeing tennis balls so far. I was like, why are you doing that? And he was like, I keep poking my eyes out on my light stands. And I was like, oh my God, I do that as well. So all of my stands, light stands, anything which can stick out has a tennis ball with a hole in it stuck on the end. And these are so good because sometimes in a massive C stand, you've got 10, 15 C stands up. You don't notice that one bit sticking out here. And as you turn around and poke yourself in the eye, it's not a great look on set. So tennis balls and everything, and just everything taped and marked so you don't trip over, knock the set over, whatever it may be. We're really big on that in studios. 
Now, something that I recently had fitted in here, it's actually down that side there, is a bathroom cabinet. And in there are medicines. We have allergy medicines, we have painkillers, all that sort of thing, because when you're on set and the client is there, it doesn't matter how unwell you are, you have to perform. And we all have our magic concoctions of various drugs and uh, antioxidants and electrolytes that will pour down ourselves to make ourselves feel human again so that we can crack on with the shoot and just do a good job of what we're trying to do and then crash and burn the following day, sleep and cry and hopefully get ready for the next day's shooting. Then if you've seen around my studio before, you'll know that I have a bit of a workshop in there with loads of random bits of wards, planks of wards and boards. And I thought at first it was just me, but every photographer has this. It's just hidden away most of the time, whereas mine's pretty much on display because it's quite open plan out there. And this is so we can build things. We can build a new table. We can build a new set. We can build something to hold something, whatever it may be. There's always circular saws, jigsaws, drills, bits of wood, planks of wood, sheets of wood. I've got a huge storage area out the back and that is just huge full-size sheets of wood. So should we need to knock something up in a hurry, we've got everything there to do it with. Again, on Instagram, this is not the life you see in a studio, but the reality of it is we all have workbenches and wood. Now, the last thing is just a huge myriad of kit. To this side here are just shelves from floor to ceiling. There is stuff under chairs, in drawers, every single inch of this studio is covered in kit. And if you've seen my previous video about how I make my money, I make it mostly with one camera and one lens. So we just have loads of kit that we don't use. And the reason is, is because of depreciation. When you buy something and you need it, it is very rarely worth selling on electronic goods. They just devalue so quickly that th there's no way that we could then sell it on and make any sense of it. So we kind of hang on to it, which is in itself particularly stupid. But that is the way we are. That is who we are. That's who I am. I hoard everything. If I've bought it, I've kept it forever and it's in here somewhere. Anyway, I hope that's interesting to you. I hope it's a, a nice insight into what goes on in a studio. If you want to know more about my studio or more about how I work in my studio, let me know what you'd like to know in the comments below. I'll try and get to those as soon as I can. See you soon. Bye-bye.